my series where we're building an automated build system with Docker and Jenkins in Azure. In part one, we set up a Linux VM in Azure, installed Docker on that VM, and set up secure communication to that Docker host. If you missed it, go check it out. This tutorial assumes you've worked through part one. In part two, we will set up Jenkins in a Docker container using a custom image and configure Jenkins to spin up slave build environments that are Docker containers on demand and then kill them to clean up. Very cool stuff. Once again, I need to give credit to Maxfield Stewart of Riot Games. I've based this on his DockerCon 2016 talk and his tutorial on GitHub, which I've linked to in the notes below. This first couple steps are for convenience, but I'm gonna set uh, environment variables so I don't have to type out my domain name and username every time. It also serves to make the examples more generic, so you can just copy the code from the blog post into your environment and not worry about the names and the IP addresses and domain names. So let's go over to terminal and set host to my host name and set my host user to my docker user username. So now I can SSH in like this instead of having to type username and, and host every time. All right, next we're gonna be cloning a project from my GitHub into this VM. So my Jenkins Docker project out on GitHub is what we'll be using to bootstrap our system. It includes Docker file image definitions for all the images and ultimately containers we need to run our system. I'm not going to deep dive into the Docker files in this tutorial, but here's a quick overview of the contents. Jenkins Master is a custom Jenkins image that we use as the backbone of our automated build system. Jenkins Data is a container for persistent data storage of our Jenkins settings. Nginx is for our web proxy. Let's Encrypt we'll use to set up TLS SSL in our system in part three of this tutorial. And we also have two sample ephemeral slave node images, Jenkins Slave and Jenkins.NET Core Slave. There's also some other random files here we'll use later in the series. Remember, in our final system, Software developers, or more likely development teams, will be responsible for creating their own build environment definitions. But in order to make sure our system is functioning, I've included these two starter examples. I encourage you to check out all the code, and also please check out Maxwell Stewart's excellent tutorial if you want more detail. All right, let's get back to work. I will clone my Jenkins Docker project here, just in the root um, on our VM. Go into our Jenkins Docker folder and we'll do a docker compose for the project Jenkins and we want to build the project. All right, pulling the images down took a good solid five minutes to complete. Let's run these three containers we need, our, our web proxy, our data store, and our master Jenkins server. You can see that the Nginx and the master Jenkins server are running. All right, let's see if Jenkins is running on our server. Awesome it is. So our custom Jenkins image is running in Docker on our VM in Azure. So how do we get that initial password from the container? The message tells us that the password can be located here. And if we do inspect our Docker file for Jenkins master, you would see that Jenkins home is set to var Jenkins home. So So if we docker exec the cat command against our Jenkins master one container, like this, yep, there's the password. Copy it, put it over here. All right, now we're just gonna install the suggested plugins. So now we're going to create our first admin user.
And there we have it, Jenkins running in a Docker container in a VM in Azure. Now we have to add the client key, client certificate, and server CA certificate to Jenkins so that it can communicate with Docker. Previously, we put all of our certificates. Well, first, I need to exit out of my SSH. And again, I'm going to use PB Copy. I'm on a Mac to copy the files to my clipboard. All right, now we have those credentials. Now we need to add a cloud config. So in Manage Jenkins, Configure System. At the bottom, we're going to add a new cloud, yet another Docker. We're going to name this Azure Jenkins. We want this to be our local IP address. One dot two three. We're going to use the TLS certs that we put in. Let's test this connection. Up. Oh, we're using a secure port. 2376, and there we go. We get a response from our Docker host. Now we're gonna add a Docker template. Eventually we're gonna automate this, but for now let's do it manually just so we know what's going on when we do automate it. All right, let's add a Docker template. The Docker image name. It's one of the ones that was in the Jenkins Docker GitHub project. We never want to pull for now, so we don't need registry cred credentials. We're going to say label will be test slave. Make sure only build jobs with label expression matching this node is selected. We definitely want JNLP launcher. The Linux user is Jenkins. We want to make sure we remove volumes also. And click save. One thing we also have to do is add another inbound security rule to our Azure VM. In our security group, inbound security rules. Let's add a new rule. And this will be Cloud Jenkins Slaves. Or 50,000, allow. Okay, that has been created, awesome. All right, let's go back to Jenkins. Let's set up a new job real quick, just to test our system. Test job, pipeline. I'm gonna do a very simple pipeline script here. So the node in a pipeline is the slave or the, the label name of the slave. 
So remember when we configured the Docker template, we said to use the, the label test slave. And this is all our build is going to do is echo hello world. Save that. Let's click build now. See the build is kicking off. You can see here that Jenkins spun up a Docker container to run that job. Disappear. Let's go on this build. The build succeeded. Let's go into build one. And you can see our echo there. All right, let's see if we can catch this ephemeral Docker container at work. Let's SSH back into our host. You can see that the only things we have running right now are the Nginx and master, Jenkins master. Let's kick off a build. You can say Jenkins slave was kicked off by Jenkins. You can see the ID right there. Matches what we see running over here. Builds running. Docker PS again. And that container's gone. It's not just stopped, it's deleted. So the container was around long enough to run a build and then discarded. Pretty cool stuff. So in this part of the tutorial, we've configured Jenkins to spin up Docker container slaves based on build labels and then discard them when the build is complete. Very cool stuff. In the next installment, we're going to set up a private Docker registry and secure it with TLS SSL from Let's Encrypt. This way we, or more likely our development teams, can push build environment images to our private registry so our build system can have access to them. Thanks and see you soon.